Hi there Year 10, welcome back, hope you've all had a wonderful Christmas break. Let's start off with a quick starter for today's lesson. On the board are 15 questions, questions 1 to 10 are all numeracy based and 11 to 15 are algebra based. Please pause the video for 10 minutes or so and have a go at as many of these questions as you can. There's something on here for everybody. If you get stuck on a question, you're welcome to move on to the next one. You're welcome to dip and choose between numeracy and algebra. I don't mind. Off you go. Okay, hopefully you paused the video there and had a go at some of these questions. The answers I was looking for, question one, if you'd done a column addition, you'd have got 2,024. A column subtraction would have given you 717. 12 times 100 is 1,200. 784 divided by 4 is 196. If you'd done a grid multiplication, you'd have got 4,092. To find 5 sevenths of 98, I needed to divide it by 7 and then multiply it by 5. And that would give me 70. 2 plus 10 divided by 5, I need to use my bid mass here, so I know I need to do my division first. 10 divided by 5 would give me 2, and 2 plus 2 gives me 4. 18 subtract 27, you need to notice that 18 was the smaller number here, so you're going to get a negative answer, and the answer is negative 9. If I've got 9, 5, 1, what could the next number be? I'm going down in 4s, 9, take away 4 gives me 5, Take away 4 gives me 1, so I need to carry on going down in 4s, and my next number would be negative 3. 2 thirds divided by 1 sixth, here I need to use my keep flip change. So I keep my first fraction, it stays as 2 thirds. I flip my second fraction, so it becomes 6 over 1, and I change my sign, so my sign becomes a multiply. I've now got 2 times 6 on the top, which is 12, and 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. Moving on to my algebra section, 3a plus 7a subtract 2a. Well, 3a plus 7a gives me 10a, and 10a take away 2a leaves me with 8 lots of a. If I've got 5 times b times c, I can write that as 5bc. I can take out those multiply signs. If n is 2, n take away 8 is just 2 take away 8, which would give me negative 6. Solving x divided by 2 equals 3. I need to solve that by multiplying both sides of my equation by 2. If I multiply both sides of my equation by 2, I'm left with x is equal to 6. So that's my solution. And expanding that bracket, well, 3 times 7 would give me 21. x times x gives me x squared, and then I'm multiplying by y. So I've got 21x squared y take away 6xy. Well done if you got that right. Okay, let's head into today's lesson. We're going to have a go at the diagnostic quiz. So A, B, C and D. Please note down your answers in your rough books as we go along and then we'll go through the answers at the end. At any point, you're welcome to pause the video if you need a little bit more time to think. Question one, which decimal is equivalent to one half? Which of these decimals is the same as one half for me? Okie dokie, question number two. Write 0 0.3 as a percentage for me. Moving on. Write 0 0.07 as a percentage for me. Okay, on the board is a protractor. Can you tell me what size is this angle? This angle here between the red lines, what size is that angle? Read the protractor and tell me what size that angle is. And finally, question number five for me. Can you choose which of these angles is most likely to be 300 degrees? Right, let's run through the answers. Question number one, I asked you which decimal is equivalent to one half? Tyler, which of these decimals is the same as one half? Thanks Tyler, the correct answer is C. 0 0.5 is the same as a half. Question number two, can I write 0 0.3 as a percentage? Tyrese, help me out, what's 0 0.3 as a percentage? Thanks Tyrese, right, I take 0 0.3 and to convert it into a percentage I need to multiply it by 100. So what's the correct answer Tyrese? Fantastic, D, 30%, well done. 
Question number three, I asked you to write 0 0.07 as a percentage. Jess, what do I need to do to 0 0.07 to turn it into a percentage? You're right, I need to multiply it by 100, just like before. 0 0.07 times 100 will give me 7% and the correct answer was D. For the next one, the size of that angle, Ryan, what's the size of that angle? Read the protractor. Splendid, the size of that angle is 165 degrees, well done. And finally, which one of these angles is 300 degrees, Rowan? Correct, it's D. A is way less than 90, B is just over 90, C is 270, D is the biggest, so that will be 300. Let's head into today's lesson. For starters, how many degrees are there in each section? Now, if I turn a full turn, how many degrees are there in a full turn? For example, Owen, if I was doing a backflip, how many degrees have I turned to do that full turn? I've turned 360 degrees. When you do a backflip, Owen, you are going through 360 degrees, as are you, Tyrese, when you're doing a front flip. Now, if 360 degrees is a full turn, what's a half turn going to be? Well, a half turn is going to be half of that, 180 degrees. So 360 is your full turn, a half turn would be 180 degrees. Now, if a half turn is 180 degrees, a quarter turn is just going to be a half of that again. So that's going to be 90 degrees. And if a quarter turn is 90, a half turn is 180, I then add on another 90 degrees to work out three quarters of a turn, and three quarters of a turn would be 270 degrees. But what do we call angles in each of these sections? So going between the full turn, which is 360 degrees or zero degrees if I haven't turned at all, and I'm less than a quarter of a turn, so I'm less than 90 degrees, what do I call that angle, Dylan? I call it an acute angle because it's cute, it's small. How about if I've gone from my full turn and I've turned a quarter turn, what do I call this type of angle? Usually I show it with a square, Sophie. Correct, it's a right angle, brilliant. How about if I turn from my full turn, not quite 180 degrees, but greater than a 90 degrees, what do I call this type of angle, please, Hannah? An obtuse angle. And how about if I turn more than 180, but less than 270, what do I call this type of angle, Josh? That's a reflex angle, correct. So we showed four different types of angles. We said a little one, which is less than a quarter of a turn or less than 90 degrees, was an acute angle. We said one that's exactly a quarter turn, which is 90 degrees, we called that a right angle. We said if it was more than a quarter, so more than 90, but less than your half turn, we called that an obtuse angle. And the one that was more than a half turn, we called a reflex angle. In your rough books, please pause the video for a minute or two. Can you match up the picture with the name of the type of angle with the definition? Pause the video for five minutes or so, draw out the picture, what you call that type of angle, and write down the definition for each one. Off you go. Okay, hopefully you paused the video and had a go at those. The answers are now up on the board. This little one here was called an acute and it was less than 90. The one with the square was the right angle and that was exactly 90. The one that was over 90 but less than 180 was an obtuse one and that was between 90 and 180. And the one that was huge, that's greater than three quarter turn, we called a reflex angle and that was more than 180 degrees. Okay, year 10, in your rough books, on your mini whiteboards or on a rough piece of paper, please pause the video for five minutes and have a go at these questions for me now. Okay, here are the answers. Please check your work and see how you did. The answer for question one, B was the odd one out because it was the only one that wasn't obtuse. Okay, year 10, quick fire round. If I've got an angle and it's 99 degrees, what do I call that type of angle? Lewis, what do I call that type of angle? Correct, that's an obtuse angle. It's greater than 90 degrees, but it's less than 180. How about if it's 90 degrees, what do I call that type of angle? 
Oh, and what do I call that one? It's a right angle, splendid. 45 degrees, what do I call that type of angle? Reuben, what do I call that one? Fantastic, it's an acute one. 270, what am I going to call that one? Okay, Izzy, what am I going to call it? It's a reflex angle, fantastic. 12 degrees. Charlotte, what am I going to call it? That's an acute angle because it's little. 300 degrees. Tyrese, what's that one? That's a reflex. Fantastic. 27 degrees. Dylan, what's this one? Cool, it's an acute angle. And finally, 123 degrees. Lilia, what's 123 degrees? What do we call that type of angle? An obtuse angle, brilliant. So those are your types of angles. Now we're going to look at working out missing angles. Now angles around a point, we said if we did a full turn or if Owen did a full backflip or if Tyrese did a full front flip, that meant that they were turning through 360 degrees. So we know that the angles around a point all the way around are going to add up to 360 degrees. Now I'm going to go through three examples of finding missing values and then there's going to be some questions for you to do. So question number one, I've been asked to find this angle x. Now I've got angles around a point, I've got two angles, I've got this one angle here, the white angle, and a blue angle. So I know those two angles are going to add up to 360. So to work out what my missing angle x is, I just need to do 360, take away the angle that I've been given, which is 310. So x is going to be equal to 50 degrees. Let's have a go at question two. This time, x, this blue angle, is the bigger angle, but we're still looking at angles all the way around this 360 degree point. So to work out what x is, I need to do 360, subtract 112. Now at this point, if you're struggling to do that kind of sum in your head, you are welcome to do a column subtraction. I would much rather you wrote it out and thought about it and got it correct, then got it wrong by guessing. So now zero take away two I can't do. So I'm going to take one from the six and that's going to become a five. 10 take away two I can do, that gives me eight. Five take away one gives me four. And three take away one gives me two. So I know that X is going to be equal to 248 degrees. Now my last example is a little bit trickier. I've got three angles around a point. I'm still trying to find this blue angle but now I've got two others that are given. However, the same theory applies. I need 360 degrees around that point. So I know x is going to be equal to 360, take away the angle I'm given, which is 103, and take away this other angle, this square angle. Now what does the square angle mean, Ryan? Awesome, it's a right angle, so we know the square means 90 degrees. So I can subtract 90 from that, and I can do this step by step, that's absolutely fine. 360 take away 103. Well, I know that's going to give me 257. From there, I need to subtract another 90. And that's going to give me 167 degrees. So x is equal to 167. Here's some questions for you to have a go at. Year 10, please pause the video for 10 minutes or so and work out as many of these as you can. A starts off a little bit easier, B gets a little bit trickier, and if you're feeling really brave, have a go at C for me. You're welcome to start wherever you like, you choose where you need to do the work. Off you go. Righto, and here are the answers for you, Year 10. Please check your answers and see how you did. Okay, I said today we were also going to look at angles around a point and angles on a straight line. Now the difference between going all the way around and doing a half turn, which is essentially what a straight line is, you're doing a half turn, we said the half turn was 180 degrees. So a straight line is 180 degrees, it's half of going all the way around. It'd be the equivalent of you doing half a backflip, Owen, probably wouldn't end well. 
but you're looking at 180 degrees. I'll go through two examples and then there'll be some for you to do. So I've said angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So if I'm given one of the angles on a straight line, I can use that to work out the other one. All I need to do is say, well, the angles are going to add up to 180, so I need to subtract the angle I'm given from 180. 180 subtract 142 is just 38. Again, you're welcome to do a column subtraction. So x is equal to 38 degrees in this case. For the second question, I've been given two angles, but I still know that all of those angles are going to add up to 180 altogether. So I know x is going to be equal to 180, take away 83, take away 42. Again, you're welcome to do this step by step. 180, take away 83, will leave me with 97. And from 97, I need to subtract a further 42. That's going to give me, if I do a column subtraction, which you are always welcome to do, 7 take away 2 gives me 5, 9 take away 4 gives me 5. So x in this case is equal to 55 degrees. And that makes sense. Looking at my picture, it's about the same as this angle here, 42, if not a slightly bigger, so that makes logical sense. In your rough books or on your mini whiteboards, whatever you have to hand your 10, please pause the video for 10, 15 minutes and have a go at as many of these questions as you can. Again, A's are the easiest, B's are getting slightly trickier, and C's are the trickiest. You're welcome to start where you need to work. Off you go. And these are the answers. Please check your answers and see how you did your turn. And that's the end of today's lesson. Thank you very much for coming along and listening. Please head on over to Google Classroom now and complete today's exit ticket. That lets me know what you've understood, any misconceptions you might have picked up, any more work we need to do, and to check that you've engaged in the lesson. Thanks for listening and have a wonderful day, Year 10. Goodbye.